present at the 35 Exposition? Did you come to yeah, the Exposition? Yeah, yes. And was that the first time you were in, no, not the first time you were in Balboa Park, sure. Oh, no, 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 no. I lived in Balboa Park. Because you lived in here, Park. right. Yes, lived yeah. in Balboa Park. Yeah. Well, in I a mean, tent? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I had, uh, in 1935, I, I had graduated from high school in 1934. Right. And I got in a Shakespeare company that was going to do cut versions of Shakespeare and take them to colleges. And uh, we had an engagement in Los Angeles at the Vine Street Theater, which became the Huntington Hartford. And yes, right there on I Vine know Street. how well I know. And uh, I played the narrator in Romeo and Juliet, two households, both alike, oh, right. and so on and so forth. But because it was a cut version, I had I had told a lot of story of <laughs> in the thing. It's other so people's parts. I, I had a big role. Yeah. I, I had a big part. And so uh, anyway, uh, then we did Julius Caesar, and we played the. More people on stage than were in the audience, and we, we, we it went thing went kaput, and I had to, we had to leave the hotel without paying. And, oh my uh, God! And, uh, Embarking you on a life of crime. And clearly. so I came back to San Diego, depressed about my short career, and uh, started working at the, in a check stand in, in in the park during the exposition. And there was the Globe Theater. And Check stand? You mean you were checking co coats and things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. My God. So renting camera, you know. And, uh, right. And uh, I would spend as much time as possible over watching the, sh the streamlined versions that they were doing in the, from this 1934 exposition in Chicago. They brought this wonderful company of wonderful actors, you know, Irene Tedrow and Martha Scott and Carl Benton Reed. And, I mean, they were, they were, they were just wonderful, and they'd been playing them a year, so they were fantastic. It was a fantastic company. And so that's, that's when we started the Globe. Right. Actually, the, we, we date it from 1935. Right. Because uh, that was really the beginning of that theater and that plant. Right. Of course, it was completely rebuilt for uh, in 19 after the exposition because that was just a temporary building, and so I I was there. And uh, then in 1936, uh, we they rebuilt the theater, and I was in the first play of the community theater that took over the the Globe. And uh, who was running I've been there it then? ever since? Who who, was who, uh, Luther Kennett became the first uh, artistic director. They weren't called artistic directors in that time. No, that, I think that. that term came later when, during the Kennedy administration, right. when uh, uh, Zelda Fitzchandler and everybody started, and they were all called artistic directors. Right. So for the first uh, 20 years, I was called the producing director because. I didn't direct all of the plays, but I directed most of the plays, and then I, I produced the other plays. So that first, I think I've seen a photograph. Yeah. Fr fr the distaff side, is that right? Yeah, the distaff side, and yes. The, and you were in that play? Yes. I played That's 1936? 1936, yes. I and then the, you became director after the war? Well, no, 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 no. Right no. away? I, I became, uh, I, uh, Luther Kennett directed 15 plays before the war, and he was called into the Navy, right. and I uh, became the director after Luther, and right. I directed 15 plays before the war. And then during the war, and that's what most people don't know, that the Globe was actually uh, not operative from, 19, from December 10th of 1941, uh, all of all of the buildings in the park, the Globe, the Natural History Museum, the Art Gallery, everything was given three days' notice, and we had to move out of the theater. And the Navy took over all of the park. You had and a month to get out. No, three days. Three days. Three oh days. Oh my God! And well, I mean, we didn't quite accomplish that, but we were out within the week. And of course, by then I had gotten a contract to, to uh, go to 20th Century Fox. How did that happen? Well, uh, Faye Emerson was in a play uh, that I directed, and the talent scouts in at the, in the Globe, right. uh, and so she got a contract, and so th then that uh, talent scout kept coming back because he, he liked the work here, and so uh, I was directing Luther Kennett had a leave of absence, and and the. 
he and Betty Holloway were playing the lead in Goodbye Again, which was, had no, uh, no uh, juvenile leads or ingenue leads, you know, or right. young, young talent. So the, they, uh, the talent scout didn't know what to do, and so this, uh, I mean, the, yeah, the talent scout. So this uh, man who was uh, head of casting at, uh, I, at 20th Century Fox was said, was said, well, why don't you take the director? And so he asked me if I'd like to go to Hollywood, and I said, yes, that'd be nice. And so he got me a contract at Fox Studio uh, on Thanksgiving. And, and then, this is 1937? No, no, 40. No. No, this is 1941, 41. Th Thanksgiving. I was working a month before December 7th. Wow. I was at the, there, and I was lucky I was out there because I would have been out of a job for seven years <laughs> yes, because you would. The, 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 the Navy kept the park right. all those years. I mean, because the Naval Hospital was hopelessly inadequate to bring all of the wounded uh, from Pearl Harbor here. Right. And that was the, the purpose of taking over all these buildings. And so there were, there were cots uh, all over. I've seen pictures of the cots all over the, the green that used to be out in front of the theater uh, with army cots uh, where the guys slept during the summertime. Good God. And so the, the, the office became uh, the bar a barber shop. A Falstaff Tavern became the, uh, a USO canteen. Oh, really? And the Globe was used for orientation lectures. And, uh, and so they had running films, training films, and all of that were, were in the Globe Theater. And so... The, and that's seven years. Yeah. They now, now, you're, now, okay, so now you're up in Hollywood yeah. at Fox yeah. prior to Pearl Harbor. Yes, yes. And, the, and then you went into the service. Yeah, well, then I, 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 I was 4F at the time because I was so skinny. I, I couldn't pass the test. And then they changed it when they were desperate for people. Why, why they decided they didn't care how thin I was. And so then I was drafted, and so I went into the Army in 1945, 46. Uh, no, 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 46 and 47. Right. Part of 46 and 47, so right. I was in the Battle of Luzon, and then I went with the MacArthur, uh, and uh, I got transferred to special service. I was in the Signal Corps, right, attached to the 37th Infantry Division. So then I went. Uh, then they decided, well, you should have been in. in you, you should have been in. Uh, you know. Uh, doing something for special services. I said, yes, I know, <laughs> <laughs> after having been shot at three times. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, I, was, I, I was there, and we, the Ernie Pyle Theater, Ernie Pyle was killed, right. and uh, so they named this theater the Ernie Pyle Theater, and they took over what was Radio City Music Hall. It was a huge, huge, I mean, revolving stages, three really? stages. I mean, they, the biggest theater in, in Tokyo became the Ernie Pyle, and we ran films. And when I arrived, uh, there was uh, Faye Emerson. Uh, Again? Uh, uh, well, there was Faye Emerson in a movie, oh. uh, because uh, from uh, you know, one of those B pictures. She was uh, the queen of B pictures yeah, at that time. And so, uh, I don't know, how, why, would we, how, why well, are I'm we going to get on the, like I'm this? Well, I'm trying to figure out, I'm, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out that when you finished in the service, did you come back to Fox? Yes, yes, yes. So you started with Fox, then you had your time in the service, yes. then you came back to Fox because <laughs> the park is still commandeered by the, uh, by the Navy, obviously. Yes, for a while. yes. Right. Yeah. So I just want to get yeah, one thing yeah. in here because then you did do Marilyn Monroe's film yes, test, is yes, that right? Yes, yes, yes. So tell me about that. Well, Marilyn Monroe was Norma Jean at that time. She uh, certainly was. She was Norma Jean, and she didn't have bleach blonde hair, but she, had, she was a blonde, but a natural blonde. And she was absolutely exactly like, uh, like you imagine her to be. Right. Well, do you want me to do that? Yes, I think I can do that. You know, and I mean, she was just uh, so breathless and so sexy, so unbelievably sexy. And I mean, just a dear, and I loved her very, very much. And I, I wrote a test for her. What, do you, what does that mean? Well, I mean, you, you, uh, they did a test. You, uh, you took a scene from a play right. or uh, anything that you thought, and that's what I got. And I was doing a test of Shelley Winters at the same time. 
a woman I have not liked very much ever. And uh, <laughs> because, I mean, she couldn't find the proper material for her test. So finally we did something from, oh, from Coday, uh, from, uh, what's his name? Oh, the, the, mm, well, never mind. Uh, <laughs> well, it, since it, we don't like her, it doesn't matter it, what the hell she It was a realistic play where she played a, a dentist, uh, w a woman in a dentist office. And uh, it was a terrible test, and I, mean, I had to put up with her for about six months because she couldn't find a scene that she liked. But I, Marilyn Monroe was a completely different thing. This is at the same time. Yeah, Both well, these women are, 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 tr are trying to get into films at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, Shelley had been knocking around Hollywood for a long time, and she'd been away, and she, uh, she was always uh, finding somebody that would just Sponsor say, her. You, you, you give you that be girl a test. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that, that girl must be tested. Yeah, so. right. But... Uh, uh, there were a lot of others. So wait, w b before you go on to the others, so, so what did you give Miss Monroe? I wrote, her, I wrote a test. I wrote a test because uh, there was a guy on the lot, Basil Walker, who had just gotten out of the Navy, and he was a, a very warm, a great, just great film personality. And so he, uh, I wrote a scene where uh, she was... Uh, a teacher, a kindergarten teacher, who, is, who had taken a trip to t Tahiti, and uh, uh, she got caught in the rain, and she came into his bar and wanted to know if she could sit there while the rain, while it was raining, and uh, he was, of course, terribly attracted to her, and she was just so, so naive and so simple, but. <laughs> Mainly, he had kept going to this shot of this guy going, ah, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 or is she just talking, and and uh, it was a, it was a great test. And actually, later, when Fox got angry at her and didn't renew her contract, once she took that film, you could have your agent transfer the film to another studio, and she got a contract at Columbia with the uh, same thing, uh, with the same test because she thought it was the best uh, film that she had on her. I always thought she was a kind of, I don't know, innocent genius. Do, do, do yes. you agree with yes. that? Yes, 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 yes. And, 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 the, and the Strasburgs, Lee Strasberg, and, and the wife uh, oh. almost ruined her. I know. Almost well, destroyed Arthur Miller's her. done this play called Finishing the Picture, yes. you know, yes. in which the Strasburgs, if thinly disguised, yes. are dealing with this very neurotic. Yes. It's all about the misfits. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and the interesting thing, from my standpoint, is that when I came back, I found out who, th had re who they had hired to replace me as a test director was Lee Strasberg. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, and then so the quality I, went downhill th from th there. Then I was there, you know, when, when Marilyn was under the influence of the Strasbergs, and they almost killed uh, her, her talent yeah. because, I mean, she was trying to do the method and do everything, and uh, and and uh, Mrs. Strasberg said on the sets, and finally the director said, "I that woman is not to come on the set because Marilyn would look at her. Did I do everything right according to <laughs> according to the method?" And she'd say no, and then Marilyn yeah. would say, "Let's do it again." You see, and so I mean, they were very, it was very destructive. Nightmare. Very destructive. Did did. You, did the people just hand you people to deal with, or did you have an eye for talent? Were you allowed to find people yourself? Well, I mean, uh, I wasn't a talent director, but I, I actually did a lot of talent scouting. I did talent scouting because there was a theater in Palm Springs, so during the wintertime I'd go to Palm Springs. There was a theater in Laguna, so I'd go down uh, over weekends for Laguna, having all my expenses paid because I was mm. scouting plays. And so I did bring people in. Uh, and th and, and th anybody, th anybody we remember? Did you find anybody worth note? I mean, well, I'll get to this in a minute, yeah. but there are a few people yeah. from here yeah. that we should talk about. But did, yeah. you, did you pull anybody out of the ocean? No, I did, uh, yeah, I did pull somebody out of the ocean, but that's a completely different story. That's when I was in the Army in, in the Philippines. I, I, I saved a, a huge guy who got frightened out, of, uh, and they yelled for help and help, and I went with this scrawny little kid, pulling him in, giving him mouth to muzzle resuscitation and everything, and, I said, and he was just coughing, and he, he was all right. And I, I said, are you okay? And he said, yes. And I said, well, that's good. And so he got up and walked away. 
And I thought, well, that son of a gun, he didn't even say thank you. You know, <laughs> you know that was Henry Kissinger. Did you know that? You know, <laughs> no, and yeah. I, I, I thought. <laughs> yeah, you probably didn't understand his accent. No. I'm sure yeah. that was it. <laughs> big, big, uh, hell of a big yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, you're... <laughs> <laughs> so Craig, so so then, then they relinquish the the the, uh, the Navy relinquishes their their hold over the park, and they call you home. What happens? How do you leave Fox and come back here? Well, the, well I used to come down to come here all the time, you know, on weekends. This is my family, my mother and my father, and they were getting along in the years, and I realized that I really should be at home. Around it, yeah. And at that same time, Fox, as a, as a dialogue director, as a test director, uh, and all my background, it meant that I was going to get a B picture. That's when the, you got a B picture, uh, you know, and uh, so uh, to direct. But then they cut out all B pictures because they decided they must do epics and, and not have B pictures anymore. So I knew my chances of getting to going right into directing were very nil. And so I thought, this is not working out very well. My contract was up, and they decided that they were going to not renew my contract. But my agent said, you go into television. Television is what you should be doing because you have a good sense of, uh, of comedy, and you'll get a t to be a television director. And so I said, well, let me think about that. And, and see what you can do. And then I went home, and then Delza Martin came up with tears in her eyes and said, please come and direct the, we're, going to, we're getting the theater back and we want you to come and direct the first show. And I said, well, okay. And so I came down to direct the first show. Which was? Which was the, the time of your life. Oh, wow, 17 people. Yeah, 17 people, time of your life. And uh, so I just stayed. I don't blame you. Because, well, I, I thought, you know, in, in Hollywood, uh, if you're Orson Welles, which, I mean, I, my contract, and Orson Welles and I both started in motion pictures at the same time. So, I mean, you know, he was my, you know, the, and, and of course, because he was from New York, I mean, he got the Mercury Theater, and I mean, you know. He, oh, yeah. And so, anyway, he, 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 his career was going great guns. Mine wasn't getting anywhere. Maybe you so, pulled him out of the water. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, uh, that's where, that's so that's where how you came back yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So having watched you over the years, yes. you handle actors very directly, very personally, very up close. Yeah. Uh, I would say almost invasively, without ever upsetting them, but you really get in close. Now, only somebody who really knows acting yeah. can get that close to an actor without yeah. them freaking out. Yeah. Um, I, know, I know your career started with the Billy Goats Gruff, with yeah. it being yeah. a troll. That was, yeah. a kid, was that kindergarten yeah. or first grade? Kindergarten. 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 Right. Did yeah. you have a huge success in this part? I, I was, a, I, well, it changed my life. Well, I, I, and because a few I others mean, as well. well, well you know, when, I could, when I could be this gruff and have all those goats shaking and being terribly frightened of me, I thought, this is, the, I want to live in the theater, theatrical world. I want to live in the make-believe world because, I mean, I got beat up as this grunt in the family, the, the littlest kid in the school. I'd get beat up at recess every day. And so I thought, yeah, I want to live in this world. Did you have a big voice? Well, I mean, you know, they, they, well, I, I probably was a high soprano, but I, No, but I mean, as a kid, yes. was that a loud voice? No, but, but you know, she th the kindergarten teacher thought, to have the littlest kid play the troll is a wonderful idea. Yeah, it see. is, too. And, and so, I mean, I went, <laughs> you know, and I, look at it, and I thought, this is, this is for me. This is what I want to do. All my life. You've been terrifying and people so since, I haven't did. you? <laughs> terrifying people. Listen, so, but, okay, yeah. we all sort of... Oh, well, we're talking about this closeness, you know. I mean, yeah. Your, 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 your criticism is well taken. It's not criticism. I mean, no, it's no, ama know, I'm amazed. I know, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, it's, it's motion picture technique. Aha. Uh -huh. It's motion picture technique. I mean, it's, it's motion pictures. On a, in a motion picture, you know, I mean, there's all those people. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, the motion pictures. Uh, Orson Welles, when he first got to Hollywood, said, 
This is the finest electric train a boy ever had. Yeah, it's true. Because, I mean, you have everything. You have all those technicians. And, I mean, you know, it's cameramen. And the cameramen, I mean, in some ways, I think it is a, it, it, it's a visual art. And so your cameraman is your, has star. to be your very best friend and your star. Right. And, the, and, and good directors have had wonderful cameramen. And bad directors can be saved by a good camera. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so uh, it, well, it's a fascinating thing. But th there, with everything going on, I mean, usually you go up and sit and say, uh, in this scene, you know? And, and so you, you're always hovering. And so, I mean... To I, keep everybody out of their focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and so, uh, and that's why I like Arena. That's why I, I love Arena, because... It's like a it, camera. There, it's like a camera, because I mean, sometimes... Uh, you, one person is, you, you, they have their close-up, they have a two-shot, and they have a long shot, and, you, and it doesn't bother you that people have their backs to you. Right. And so, I mean, that's why, I mean, uh, I, I always think I am a camera when I'm directing in the Carter. Right. And, I, and actually, it is a realistic way, and so there isn't an upstage, an up center stage, a, a strong positions that you have on a proscenium march, right. which is f false in right. a way, because they're always having to remember that the audience is in one direction only. Right. Right. But there you can forget about it, and so I think it is a much more realistic way uh, to, to, to act. So you came back from Fox a different director? Yes. I mean, were you aware that your technique was changing? Did it open you up in some interesting way? It must have. No, I, I, I would say that, that it was, uh, it, 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 it didn't start right away. And, but but I, uh, I, I have always had that kind of feeling that, that, that if you want to make criticism of an actor, you don't really criticize them. You always encourage them. You find a way to encourage them. And sometimes, of course, because I have a nasty tongue and I'm really am not a nice person at all, I will say perfectly horrible things. I've heard that. Uh, you know, I will, I will say, well, you know, to a beautiful girl, what do you think you're doing? You're absolutely out of your mind. Don't do that there. Let me tell you what you really should do because you'll look beautiful if you do it. You know, well, you just tell them. They look beautiful as you go, yeah, <laughs> you know, so, so that, I don't, I don't know why I'm going on like Because, this. I mean, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how no. you became, how your technique evolved and how your taste evolved. You obviously always had a, a taste for, for actors that were really good. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple names and I want you to tell me how they happened. Yeah. Marion Ross. I was doing uh, the, the second play, Ladies in Retirement, I think, was the second play I was doing, or the third play after Time of Your Life. And there was Marion, and she read for me, and she played a, a little Cockney girl in it with a Cockney accent. And there was that apple cheek. And, I mean, she was just so fresh and so real and so simple. and and. Not pretty in the Hollywood sense at all, but I mean, but beautiful. And so, she, so she started working a lot at the Globe uh, while she was still at State College. Here's another one, Victor Bono. Victor Bono was in junior theater, and he was a great big kid. I mean, huge, you know, huge, heavy. I mean, and fat, and huge. But he was he was big every way. You know, he's tall, I mean, he, was, uh, he looked like a lummox, you know, but, but he uh, had some talent, and it showed up even in, in junior theater. And from junior theater, he came and read for me, and uh, I cast him as Volpone. And he played a Falstaff for us, okay. and, and uh, then he, he acted for uh, several years here. Yeah. Bea Richards. Yeah, the great Bea, Richards. Bea Richards. She was teaching dancing at the YW, YMCA. I mean, just for, a, you know, they paid her $5 to teach a dancing course or something, not, not any money at all. But she read that there was going to be auditions at the theater, and she came up and read. 
eventually she played two wonderful roles for me in both uh, Little Foxes and, oh, uh, yes. and uh, the other one. What's the earlier one uh, that she wrote afterwards? Another Part of the Forest. <laughs> Another Part of the Forest. She played both roles for me. And then she ended up playing them in the New York origin, then eventually. And then I g gave her the d part of being a choreographer for the musicals we do. We did all those caught in the acts. And, I mean, she was just a fantastic talent. And then finally she went up to Hollywood and, and, and she ended up, you know, getting a, a, an Academy Award for that performance. Uh, yes, she did. Uh, and, uh, uh, you, guess who's guess coming to get it to against dinner? Against Hepburn and Tracy. Yeah. And then one of your kids ended up in Rebel Without a Cause. Oh, Dennis Hopper. Yeah, well, Dennis Hopper was, uh, he went to Grossmont High. I knew his, uh, his coach, a, a woman who was a singer and an actress at Starlight Opera. And she asked me, she says, I have this student, and he does, he, 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 he does elocution, I mean, things, and he does uh, great speeches and stuff. And would, would you just see him and hear him? Uh, I cast him in a show. And he was very good. He, 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 he was very talented, and then he went up to Hollywood, and he's started. Been misbehaving ever since. Yes, and, and, and he was misbehaved, and, and we finally got kicked out of films. Yep. And, you know, and, and because he was, uh, you know, incorrigible. So anyway, uh, then he came back. He had a one, and he came back, and he started performing again as a character actor, and he has had a fantastic, he had a fantastic career and, and uh, gave up a, a lot of the drugs and booze and everything that he was doing and, uh, and, ha and had a fantastic career. All of these people remain great friends of yours and great friends of the globe. Yes. Uh, they all went on to great careers, yes. but yes. they all kept their roots here and kept their loyalty here, which I think is wonderful. Yes. Um, let, me, let me change the subject now. I want to ask you something about you that we've never talked about. Was your passion for Shakespeare was it from the exposition? What happened? I mean, no, it, it, it started. It started in, in junior high school. Really, it started in junior high school when I would do uh, uh, soliloquies, you know, uh, from Shakespeare, and I did the closet scene from Hamlet and that kind of thing. And I had a drama teacher that was a, a Shakespeare enthusiast, and so I did a lot of sh uh, tournaments. Uh, and I won a scholarship to Pasadena Playhouse, which had a wonderful school at that time. And I never took that scholarship, but uh, uh, I played at Pasadena Playhouse in these two student tournaments. These plays have existed for 400 years, and I like to think that the Globe has had some, I don't know, uh, some purpose in sustaining that tradition. What do you think about that? our role in how we've protected Shakespeare and how it's even done now. Do you think we have a globe way of doing plays? Yes, I do. I, I do think we have a way of doing them. And of course, it, I mean, to me, it is so terribly important because, uh, I mean, we talk about history and I, I, I see things on television and history is uh, the Kennedy assassination. And it's from then on, and that's history. Well, I mean, there's been hundreds and hundreds of years of history that that we never cover, and I I, I believe that that sometimes we uh, sort of deny or don't have any uh, value, put any place any value in 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 the uh, poetry and in the language and in the history and what man has done and what man has accomplished and how they accomplished it and the difficulty of accomplishing it. And so, uh, and of course, uh, there's no doubt, there's no doubt that, that, that Shakespeare was a unbelievable talent. And I mean, what he had to say, what he had to say and the way he said it was, I mean, he should not be forgotten. And of course, the wonderful thing is that when actors have a chance to play Shakespeare, they mostly, if they have any sensitivity at all, they are overjoyed, overjoyed at having language and saying something. And, 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 and uh, the, the whole philosophy and the whole uh, intelligence and the whole compassion of Shakespeare is all, all there, plus the language. And I, 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 
I find today that uh, just these uh, beats of, uh, of little tidbits of things that people say and, and that the, are the, 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 not using language well. I mean, I, I, I think of our presidential candidates and our, our political people, I mean, they, they, they don't have a love of language. They don't want to search for the right word. They just want to hit on what is going to be a sound bite. And I mean, I, I don't want. To, I don't care to live in a soundbite world. I mean, there's there, there's too much of value and too much of of goodness and too much of of man's purpose that we have sort of dismissed. And so I think it's terribly important. I think it's very very important. And I I I appreciate that it, we are able to do it. The one thing that a long tenure that I feel that I've had, and you yeah. must feel you've had, affords one is the ability to see things keep coming back. Uh, I mean, people keep saying the theater is dying, the tradition is dying, that uh, people aren't going to want to see Shakespeare. Now we're doing Shakespeare and Rep again, and it's popular. Uh, rap has now started to restore the idea of language in music, where melody carried it for a long time, and now the message is very much prevalent in people. People are reading the, uh, uh, Shakespeare, they're reading poetry, again, in a way that they haven't in decades past. I guess if you just hang in there with the right values, yeah. uh, sooner or later yeah. you're justified. Yeah. I mean, I, want, I think probably the thing that maybe we share more than almost anything else is in spite of everything else, we're probably both ultimately optimists. Don't you think so? I think so. Aren't you I'm, pleased? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overjoyed. <laughs> Uh, you, you can be ruthless when you judge actors, not in front of them necessarily, but certainly when you talk about them yeah. as people not having being up to the mark yeah, or what yeah, have yeah. you. Uh, how did you rate yourself as an actor? As an actor? Um, well, I thought I was very good at the time. But, I mean, most of, most of my time, uh, most of the time, I actually played character roles. I mean, uh, in high school and things, I, I wouldn't play the romantic lead or anything such like that. The, the distess solid was an unusual part for me to play, mm -hmm. of a young man who, uh, was, who wanted to go into, who was in films in London, in England. It's an English film. And... Uh, uh, is a film director at 21 years old. Mm -hmm. And actually, th then it was interesting that not too many years after 20, being 21, I got my contract at Fox, and I kept thinking, this I'm is this, guy. Just, I mean, this is an I'm interesting this guy, thing yes. here, you see. But, uh, but you gave up acting. Yes, yes. Because? Well, because I, 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 unlike most people, I had unbelievable stage fright every performance. It wasn't just opening night. It lasted. I mean, I never felt that I could control what I was doing because uh, the stage fright interfered with it. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for me and unfortunately for you, I didn't act again, I mean, after really uh, the distaff side until uh, you decided that I ought to play the stage manager in our town. Well, let's talk about that. Because <laughs> it was, it was a t in, in, as you are fond of saying, in this tit-for-tat world. Yeah, yeah. In 1976, you said to me, um, I should come and direct the community, not just the, not just the Shakespeare yeah. or, the, or the professionals, but I should come and work with the community theater. And you wanted me, you wanted, in honor of the, of the bicentennial, you wanted to do Our Town, and I hadn't seen it since high school, and I, I read it on a plane that you, you gave me the script. I read it on my way home. I nearly had a nervous breakdown. I wept so hard reading it. I thought it was such a great play. Yeah. But I figured that if I was going to do it, that, that the only person I thought should play stage manager is you. Now, I will say this, and, and one of the most irritating questions that any director gets asked on one of these interviews is, what's your favorite play? What, uh, uh, you know, and we'll come I'm going to ask you that. Because I, or do you have any favorites? But I will say that when people ask me that question, our town with you as the stage manager always is amongst the top four or five. Uh, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life, and, I, and I, I would give anything to see it today. What was it like for you? Oh, it was, it was just hell. sheer hell. <laughs> 
just sheer hell. I never realized. Did you enjoy until, it ever? Well, I mean, I didn't realize that he is one third of the play. He has the dialogue of one third of the play. And I mean, it is a long, long part. And it is a strenuous part. Yes, it is. Because, I mean, it's so episodic, and you have to remember, where, where, uh, is she married yet? <laughs> and what do you do next? And, well, you know what we went through in that traffic circle going around. And you're trying to get me to learn my lines. Yes, I have to. We have to be clear about this. We, I tried to get you to learn your lines while you were driving the car one day. We were 15 <laughs> minutes on a clover leaf going around because you couldn't remember the line, and you couldn't remember to get off the clover leaf. I, we, I'm surprised we're not there yet. But you did learn it. <laughs> yes. Uh, but but uh, it was, uh, you know, I mean, uh, John King's very dear boy. I mean, he was the stage manager. And, I mean, he treated me. I mean, I had to sit and he had to say, <laughs> move me around and tell me where I was and what I was doing. I was absolutely, uh, it was, it was an Why did you say thing. yes? I don't know. Oh, I know why I said yes, because I was going to be 62 years old, and I thought, uh, I wonder if I can remember lines. And so I, th that was one of the things. I thought, maybe I can remember lines. And I thought, I should, I should do this. Jack seems to want me to do it, and it might be fun, you know. And, uh, and do you actually, recall that you came in late because you were directing another play? Do you recall that? No. You were directing the play just ahead of that. Yeah. And you said, I can't play the part because I'm doing this other play. And I said, your stuff is all by itself. I'll wait for you. I'll do everybody else, and then I'll do your things. And that's what we did. So it was even harder on yeah. you because when you actually came in, you didn't start with everybody else. I directed all the other scenes, and then I, we put you into it. You see, I don't remember any unpleasant Well, I don't blame you. You were so panicked. <laughs> yeah. did you, you, what was it like? I mean, some of it really moved you. I know that. Well, I, I mean, I, it, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous play. It's a wonderful play. And I, and, uh, I uh, <laughs> well, I told you what Marion Ross said. You know, you did the wonderful thing in the exit, the fire curtain up, and I turned and left the stage and walked out into the night. And, all, and I was lit even out in the park and went away. And I mean, Marion Ross, who came to see it, you know, came back crying. And she said, oh, she said, it was so wonderful in that exit you had, that wonderful exit Jack did for you. She, she says, I just wanted you to die. It was so beautiful. <laughs> well, I'm very glad you yeah, did. Yeah. I'm very glad you did. The fire, 1978. Yes. They, what happens? The phone rings. The phone rings, and it's who uh, calls you? Uh, Donna Couchman. Donna Couchman calls, and she says that she's in the costume she's shop. She's in the costume shop. She calls, and I, said, I don't know whether she had heard it or whether uh, she was. I don't think she could have been there because it was really early in the morning. It was very early in the morning. She called, and I, uh, from my house, I can look out my bedroom window. And I, I can see the California Tower. Really? Yes, I can see the California. Well, it used to be. There's so many trees now around my house, you can't see anything. But uh, at that time, there weren't that many trees. And I could look, and I saw all the fire, and I saw all the smoke all, all around the California Tower. And I went over, and uh, there it was. And uh, so that, that was, uh, I started, that was my first day that I ever had a cup of coffee. Really? Yes, I never, I never in the army. No, I never drank coffee, and so uh, we were all sitting around at the Cafe del Remoro deciding what we were going to do with the rest of the season, and <laughs> where we were going to move the play, and what we could do. And they put coffee in front of everybody, and I started drinking it, and so I've been drinking it ever since. And uh, so that was a bad thing that happened to me. <laughs> so I'm going to green tea now, but. Uh, oh, that's, that's another good. subject. That is another yeah. subject. Yeah, uh, but... Uh, Did you... Um, uh, the fire, the fire. The, the interesting thing about the fire was it, it was arson. They, they determined it was arson. Yes, there was, I know. There was, and it started in the auditorium, in seats down on the, uh, the right-hand side facing the stage. Uh -huh. uh, house right. Uh, house right. There was a pair of kerosene or gasoline or something poured, and it was in the theater. They seats. tracked the fire to that place. Yes, they tracked the fire, and there was a, a fire door, you know, just yes, outside, there was. up steps, and and it was a, a door that you could jimmy open very easily. 
And so, I mean, they somebody got in and somebody did it. And of course, they always think that in an arson, I mean, you fired somebody or somebody has a hate for them. And I thought, well, you know, I mean, God you, knows. I mean, when, when you cast as many plays as I've cast, well, I mean, there's a lot of people that hate you because <laughs> they didn't get the part. So, I mean, I couldn't name all the people I had offended down through the years. And uh, so they never did determine it. And about a year after the fire and the building of the theater and everything, the fire marshal came up to see me again and he said, Mr. Noel, he said, at the time of that fire, you were raising, try, raising funds for a third theater. And I said, yes, we were. And he says, and that, uh, well, that campaign wasn't going anywhere, was it? And I said, no, it wasn't. And he says, well, looking at, uh, and I, I started laughing and I said, <laughs> uh, he was accusing me of starting this fire. <coughs> and of course, I'm so absent minded anyway, and I thought, how do I know that I didn't go and start that fire? <laughs> went home, went to bed, let got down a couch and call, and I have no recollection. I've had amnesia about the whole thing. And I thought, God, maybe I did. I wonder if that's possible. And, well, I didn't start it. But well, I mean, lots of people. Then we had another fire, which I said was your fire, when the, 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 when the festival stage burned down yes. in 80-something. Three, four, four, eight, 84. 84. And I said, this fire's on you, Jack. That's right, I've you had did. mine. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. But I remember years later, somebody, somebody they apprehended somebody up in Minneapolis who yes. apparently claimed uh, that he'd, he had gone around the theater, I mean, around the country, systematically. Yeah. Burning theaters down. So yeah. apparently that was that was yeah. um, uh, Then okay, so here we sit, you and I, yeah. and it's now 25 years of active service yeah, yeah. of uh, unspeakable happiness, as we say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, how has it changed? How have I, I changed? I mean, how has it changed? I mean, how has the theater changed? Well, yes, I mean, well, I from mean, somebody who walked into the check room in 1935. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To where we yeah, are today, yeah, yeah. dirty rotten scoundrels yeah. going yeah, off to yeah, New York yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in a matter of months. Uh, uh, it's a vast, it's an amazing trajectory, yeah. don't you think? Well, I think it's an amazing trajectory, and, and San Diego has gone through an amazing thing. I mean, you go downtown today and you think, uh, when did they do all of this? I mean, you know, it's suddenly, it's suddenly alive. And uh, one of the things that happened is that uh, those 15, those 30 plays, around 30 plays we did prior to the war were, uh, you know, that, that was hard. That was hard. That, I mean, San Diego was dead and sleepy. And uh, what I wanted to do with my life was create a theater town. And today, I mean, there is a little theater on every street corner. And I mean, amazing. it is amazing. It is amazing. And so I am pleased at the progress. But San Diego changed during the war years. I mean, you know, it tripled its population. And, and, uh, uh, it, and then UCSD arrived and the universities. And, and the, they we diversed our economy. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful growth that has happened everywhere. But I mean, part of, your, part of the, our growth is your growth. And part of what has happened to you, and and, the, and of course, I can't believe that you've been with us as long as you have. This is amazing. Because of course, I mean, everybody says, "Well, you know, Jack will be leaving." And I've heard that for twenty years. Me now. too. And of course, I and also I, <laughs> I, I used to think I, and then when I think, well, Jack can't leave; he's just gotten here. And so, I mean, I keep thinking, well, Jack must have been here ten years. No, it's twenty-two years. <laughs> it's twenty-five now. Twenty-five years, you see. I and I mean, I and then you, ten years before, before that. That. I knew you. I know. So I've known you quite some time. I know. And, and I just want to tell you, you're not without talent. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got, yeah. I've got no. a few things to I mean, prove. You, you, I mean, you, yeah, I mean you, 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 all of the things that has happened, I mean, the, the, the way the theater has changed, the way life in the, in the, in the country has changed. Yes. And then the opportunities. And, and I mean, who would have known? I mean, I, I mean, you didn't set out to plan your life in the theater, particularly. No. You didn't think, I'm going to go to San Diego, and then I'm going to take all the shows to Broadway. Do you remember the conversation we had in 1975 in your office? After I'd done much ado about nothing with Ellis and Marion Mercer, Ellis Rabb and Marion Mercer, mm. you called me into the office, 
And you said to me, I don't know what's going to happen to you. And I don't know what kind of career you intend to have. But you have the kind of, per I'll never forget this. You have the kind of personality that can work with a board of directors. Yeah. You didn't say anything about my talent no, as a no, director no, no, no. or what, what else, but you said, I think you could do this work if you wanted to. Yeah. Now, I knew something of your history, of, of the history of this theater, of how many people had wanted to come yeah. here. And I knew that that, that uh, open door didn't come casually. But do you remember, you don't, re do you remember I, that I, I know, no, I don't remember uh -huh. that at all. And yeah. I'm very, but I'm not, I'm not at all surprised that I said that to yes. you. Yes. Because, you know, at the time <coughs> you came here on a permanent basis was the time that I was 62 years old and I thought, I've got to, I, I can't do what uh, happened to Pasadena Playhouse and the head of Pasadena Playhouse that couldn't make up his mind who was going to follow him. And I wanted to choose someone. I didn't want us because at the same time they were looking for someone for La Jolla Playhouse that was going to start up. And so I thought, I, want, I don't want a board of directors and uh, other people to choose who's coming. And so I had enough influence with the president of the board that I said, I want to rec make a recommendation. And there were quite a few candidates that I could possibly, but you were the one that I knew uh, had, had the personality to be able to get along with the board and also had the talent. And, uh, and I proved that that was the wisest choice I ever made. Well, the wonderful thing about what happened to both of us, I think, is that the war, the impetus for the war, what happened to you as a result of it, which launched that first arc, mm. and then conceivably the fire, and what happened to the country in terms of theater, and the appetite for theater, which propelled me as well. Yeah. We both sort of rode these two arcs yeah. like surfers in yeah. an odd way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we just we're the right people yeah, at the yeah, right time. Yeah. I think one of the amazing things, and I keep saying this to other people, I've never known another arts organization, and I've never known really another business, where a CEO invited another CEO in and didn't leave. Mm. Yes, well. <laughs> and here we sit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you yeah, know, here we yeah, sit. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's sort of bizarre and sort of fabulous, don't you think? Well, I, I think it is wonderful, but I mean, it was, you know, it, one director can't direct everything in the season. Right, I mean, the sure. seasons that now most theaters are doing. Right. And, you know, I mean, I, 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 made, I started that back when I had a second theater, and, and you could only rehearse the plays at night because everybody was amateur and could only rehearse at night. Well, I couldn't do two shows at a time, so Bill Rush came mm -hmm. and did some 60 plays at the Globe as an associate artist. And, and even when you came, I mean, sometimes uh, you'd direct five plays, I'd direct three plays, mm -hmm. and then pretty soon we were bringing in guest directors, mm -hmm. and, it, and it cha that all changed also, uh, and y your schedule changed. But uh, I, I don't feel it's unusual to have two directors or two people in, the, uh, but I, I never felt that we were, I felt that when Tom and you joined me, uh, that, uh, that we were just, that we had a different relationship of some kind. It, I, I don't think of it as a CEO. And I don't either. No, I don't either. But other people do. Well, the other people do. And that now, of course, I mean, you know, I mean, I, even when you started, I mean, permanently here, I mean, you know, our staff was not a huge, huge staff. I know. No, I mean, we have 200 people I know, working I for us at one time. And you just think, oh, I mean, no wonder we have to charge so much for tickets. <laughs> no wonder we have to go out and beg for money all the time. Because it, it's, a, it's a big corporation now. The idea of Teatro Meta, which must have always been in the back of your mind with your proximity to, to, to uh, Mexico and uh, Tijuana, how did that happen? Well... It happened because I got tired of reading in the daily paper about Tijuana sewage spilling into uh, Imperial Beach and that sort of thing. And I thought, surely these two countries, you know, with this, I mean, so such a proximity and that Tijuana is always going to be a larger city eventually than San Diego is and that these two 
14 miles apart and uh, with a language barrier and with a, a border and all of this. And I thought, surely there ought to be something positive that we could do. And of course, I mean, to me, the art, arts are positive. Arts are a force for good. And so I thought, I want to see if I can do some sort of bilingual theater and if I can interest people in bilingual. And what, uh, I believe in bilingual, you see. And, uh, but I believe that, uh, that we all should be bilingual and not just say that the Spanish or the Mexicans have to be bilingual. I, I wanted us to actually start in this county of teaching in schools of them both learning at the same time. Both the languages. Spanish kids are learning English and the English kids are learning Spanish so that there isn't, it's our language. You have to learn our language because you're here. I mean, we're there and they're there and, and there shouldn't be a there there. It should be everywhere, you know. And so I wanted a unison thing. But I started with uh, having a bilingual and, and I found out that it was, uh, uh, it, was, it didn't work very well because uh, I went to this woman, you know her name, up in the L.A. that, uh, that has a, b a bilingual company. Oh, yes. And I called her and asked her about it. And I, I said, How, where can we find people, actresses that are bilingual? She says, well, there aren't any. That's the problem. You can't find them. You won't find them. Well, I did find them, and we did do one bilingual show in the Carter, and it was uh, highly successful, and it was a, a wonderful play, a wonderful fan lights, it was called. And uh, even I, who am so stupid of having lived here all my life and can't speak uh, Spanish, it just irritates me. That I, that's the only thing I ever flunked in school. It was right after lunch, and I went to sleep at every Spanish lesson. <laughs> And so, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And, and uh, uh, you know, the, our, our contempt, or our, our regard of thinking everybody has to speak the way we do, and they, they have to be bilingual, but we don't have to be bilingual. I mean, the arrogance. And so uh, that's what I was trying to break down and, 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 and reach across and see if we could take shows into, into Tijuana, and they could bring shows here, and have a whole uh, artist uh, artists, uh, that had something in common, so that there would be something in the papers besides sewage. You know? Well, you know, uh, uh, like most things, when you start with one idea, it sometimes yeah. becomes something yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, Teatro Mente has become an amazing educational yes, yes, extension exactly. for us yes. and an influential one as yes, well. Yes. What about our training program? What about the MFA program? That seems to be one of the great glories of, uh, of our history in the last uh, 10 or 20 years. Don't well, you? the MFA program is just, uh, I can't tell you how proud I am, and I tell you it is the very best. I don't care. I mean, that's what I can claim because I have nothing to do with it, actually. But it is Well, you insisted that it happened. It, it is a fantastic program. And I mean, the fact that these kids, uh, seven, uh, seven in each course, and sometimes there are three courses, three times during the summer that we have 21, 21, actors, right. 21 actors to use in Shakespeare and everything. And it's all worked beautifully. And it's worked beautifully because of uh, uh, the University of San Diego and uh, because of Sally Fury mm -hmm. being provost and arranging it that it, it was put in the English department rather than the drama department and the students have to write their own uh, material for their uh, graduating exercises and it, it, everything, everything about it, it has been perfection and it has uh, covered the theater by having understudies and all those the seven actors have to uh, uh, understudy for every show of the season and I mean, so they have to learn all, you know, hundreds and hundreds of lines that they will never get attempts to, 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 to play. And yet they do it. And I mean, and uh, acting, like anything, like, like a musician playing the piano, everything. I mean, you have to keep your instrument in tune. And the more you do, the better you become. Even if, if, if talent isn't the first thing that they that you think about mm -hmm. i mean it it helps you to get that foundation that knowing the courage of an actor the courage of acting just go on and do it and 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 so it it is one of my prides and joys is is 
our MFA program, and our TF to Metro program that we have in schools. I mean, we have saved, we have saved kids, kids from gangs. We have done all unbelievable things. There's one boy, you know, that was a terribly troubled person, never spoke in class, was, was surly, was impossible. And I mean, he f finally we went in and we, to we talked about writing plays, and he wrote a play, and he wrote a play about his parents and about, about how he felt about his parents. And the parents came to see it. And they had a whole catharsis that when they, they realized what he felt about yes. them yes. and what they felt about him. Yes. And I mean, and, and, and he went on and, the, and the, all the teachers said, it, it is just like an unbelievable awakening what happened to that family and what happened to him. And, and now and saving course, him from gangs and all of that. And now, of course, you can open the New York Times, which I've done recently, and there, in on off Broadway, playing for a commercial run, is Heather Raffo, one of our MFA students, mm -hmm. doing this this extraordinary uh, Afghanistan, you know, this yep. extraordinary panoply of women in Af in Afghan yes. Afghanistan and how they've survived. And she is a huge success with the program that she started with that MFA program. Yeah. So you just never know when they think, where these things are going to end up. Have you missed anything that you wanted to direct or see done on, this on our stages? Is there anything that we've left, any leaf that you've left unturned at this point? Well, well I like, for instance, I mean, something was accomplished just, just this recent when Brendan Fox directed uh, Afro Band. And this woman, you know, this uh, restoration woman mm -hmm. in the restoration period wrote these plays that nobody knows about. Right. And I mean, they are very, I mean, she is fantastic. Yes. And I mean, she, and she brought a whole new th feeling of, of what she had to say as a restoration woman. writer. Right. And uh, so, I mean, the discovery, there's all kinds of discoveries and all kinds of things uh, that uh, will happen and can happen, but uh, I don't th think permanent. Uh, from my standpoint, that oh, I've got just let me do this. It's one thing, you know. But I mean, uh, there, there's a, there's so much to be to, to to look forward to. I agree. I agree. This has been fun. Well, I <laughs> I, I didn't know I was going to be interrogated like this. <laughs> Well, you <laughs> have. I am absolutely furious. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Thank you, And Craig. bless you. And you too.